Here we have it, this is the Huawei Nova 5 Pro. The Nova 5 isn't out yet in China. We've got the Pro version. This is an interesting phone. It is 3000 RMB in China, that's the Chinese price, and that puts it right in line with a whole host of Snapdragon 855 phones. For example, the Xiaomi Mi 9, the Redmi K20 Pro. Then you've got other phones like the X27 from Vivo, all competing with this. So what does it give us for that price tag? Let's get it open. The Nova 5 Pro comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and either 128 or 256 gigabytes of storage. The case you get in the box is one of those plastic, horrible things. Please stop putting those in my phone boxes. I hate them, I don't use them. The ones from Xiaomi and OnePlus, the hard cases are much better. It charges via USB-C. In my box, I got a pair of earphones too. These have a headphone jack on the end, but the Nova 5 Pro version doesn't have a headphone jack. So they give you this dongle as well. Something I am really pleased about is the inclusion of the 40 watt fast charger in the box. 40 watt is really, really quick and it's a big feature of the phone. Well done Huawei. So let's get on to the phone itself. It's a really great design. In fact, I think these sort of mid-range phones almost have a better design than some more expensive phones. I really love this purple color. It comes in a green as well, but I think I made the right choice here. The quad camera, as they're calling it at the back there, also looking really nice. The power switch and the volume rocker are on the right hand side there. Moving on to the top, you get the SIM card tray up there, but not much else. The left side bezel is completely devoid of anything, but it has this really nice flattened design. It reminds me of the P30 Pro a little bit. On the bottom there, you have a mono speaker and the USB-C port. So we have a Kirin 980 processor in this one. It's the latest chip from Huawei, although it is about to be replaced with a new chip in the Mate 30 series. A three and a half thousand milliamp hour battery with 40 watt fast charging, but no wireless charging on this one. We also get an OLED HD screen with a notch in the middle. It's an AMOLED screen. I think the colors look good. You've got the notch at the top there. Now, because Samsung are the only ones manufacturing that hole punch cutout, and for now, they're just keeping that design for themselves. So because this is an AMOLED screen or an OLED screen, Huawei had to move that cutout from the Nova 4 into a middle notch. It looks good. It's a very tried and tested design now, but it really does remind me, looking at the front, to the Xiaomi Mi 9, considering that these, at least the retail price when they started is exactly the same. The Mi 9 is actually a little bit cheaper in China now. You can get it for a couple of hundred RMB off the 3000 RMB retail price. They look very, very similar. I would say the screens are almost exactly the same. If Xiaomi didn't just uh, black out the U-shaped notch before launch, then it would have the same notch shape as well. Same size, very similar layout. The bottom bezel may be slightly bigger on the Nova 5, but it's not noticeable. They've got the same button placement on the right hand side, and they just look really, really similar. They're a really similar device. And I'm definitely gonna compare it a lot to the Mi 9 and the K20 Pro. Subscribe if you wanna see that. The camera app will be very familiar to you if you are a Huawei owner. You've got AI in this. It's actually switched on by default. Now, Huawei push AI quite a lot in phones like this. And there are a few AI features that this has that other phones don't. Uh, for example, you can shoot something with yourself in color and the background all grayed out. This has a Sony IMX582 sensor, not the 586. The 586 has some advantages in video in 4K mode, but for images and most of the video settings, they're about the same. You can go into settings here and change it from 12 megapixel to 48 megapixel mode. It takes 12 megapixel images as standard. In video, you can also use the ultra wide angle camera to shoot video. There is a two time zoom as well, but that is all digital, obviously, because there's no two time zoom camera. It's on 1080p by default, but you can go up to 4K 30 frames a second only. They have this new feature, which I've never seen on a Huawei phone before called cut in. So you have to point your phone at the sky 
and then it will have some cool effects. I've not seen that on another Huawei phone, so that's something unique to this one. Other modes, we have slow-mo, which is up to 960 frames a second, which is really good. And also we have HDR, we've got time-lapse here as well. Something the phone does have more than the P30 Pro even, is modes that would appeal to, I guess, younger people. You've got this cut-in mode, and you also have this AR lens as well. It's a 32 megapixel camera on the front there. It records 1080p video standard, and you can also use a lot of filters on that as well to take video and also photo. Like I said, a lot of filters, but I really like the fact that they're just in the camera app and you can use them. How much you would use them after the first couple of days is up to you, but I definitely had some fun <laughs> going through all the different options. And yeah, this is what you look like when you are trying that out. But after I stopped playing with it, then let's get some more serious shots in. This is the ultra wide going into the main camera. I like the colors here. They're not super punchy like you get on the Xiaomi devices. This is zoomed in two times and then we're going into the macro mode. I really like this macro mode. It turns a picture that would have looked like this into a picture that looks like this. How much you use that is up to you, but have a look at this. I think it keeps a lot of detail and it's a really cool feature. This again is a quick shot of the ultra wide. I'm gonna do a full camera test of this. So stay tuned if you wanna see that. This is the Marmite shot with full studio lighting. This is with half studio lighting, and then moving on to virtually zero lighting using night mode. That is a really impressive shot. And these are some of the phones that we're gonna test the Nova 5 against. Because it's an OLED screen, we get to use an underscreen fingerprint sensor. Really, really happy about that one. Absolutely no qualms with it. I tested it and it was quick, every bit as quick as the P30 Pro that I've got. Really, in daily usage, this is gonna be no problem for you whatsoever. Phones like the Xiaomi Mi 9, which is a cheaper price than this right now, do have wireless charging. The K20 Pro doesn't, and this doesn't. This has a slightly bigger battery than the Mi 9, though, which, if you are a gamer, may be of interest to you. So first impressions are that it looks a really solid phone from Huawei. The camera looks really good as you would expect from a Huawei. Of course, it's got the Kirin 980, which is the latest chip at the moment, and it's a powerful chip in general. Not as powerful as a Snapdragon 855, but a very, very, very decent chip. The thing is, there's just so much competition at this price level. At 3000 RMB, there are so many phones you can go for with triple cameras, and the Snapdragon 855, quick charging and big batteries. So I'm gonna put it up against all of them to see how it fares. And obviously the choice is up to you whether you wanna go with this one or another one. Subscribe if you wanna see more comparisons. I'll see you in the next one, but that's it for now.